What's up everybody, Miguel Quiles here. Today in this video, I wanna to talk to you guys about the five lies that every portrait photography newbie believes. Now listen, we've all started at some point uh, in this whole journey of, of learning to be a better photographer, but there's a lot of lies that I have seen out there that are just like ruining people's opportunity and people's chances of becoming better photographers. So today we're gonna to tackle these five lies one by one. Let's get started. All right, let's jump right into it and talk about the very first lie that I have seen running rampant throughout portrait photography. And that is that a great image is always a result of some sort of post work, right? Uh, that if somebody sees an image, the first thing they think is like, oh, you wouldn't have gotten that image if it wasn't for some crazy retouch that you did, or uh, that the raw picture probably didn't look the way that that final image looked. Listen, here's the reality. Professional photographers are taking, image that, or taking images that in camera actually look clean. They look good. They, in most situations, they should be able to be shown to a client or shown to a customer, and that customer look at it and be like, wow, that looks really good. It should almost look like a finished image would look. The post-production side of things basically is just that finishing touch. It's that thing that you do that just kind of adds your own stamp to the image. It takes an image that's a 99.9% .9 and puts it at 100%. It's not taking the image from 50% and bringing it up to 100, if that makes sense. So great images are not always a result of post work. Great images are actually a result of getting it right in camera to the most of that portrait's capabilities and then adding that finishing touch in post-production. That's one of the biggest lies I think that I've seen, but there's more. We have four more. Let's go into the very next lie that I hear all the time, which maybe you guys have heard too. All right, let's talk about the uh, second lie that a lot of portrait photography newbies believe, and that is that it is all about the bokeh. All right, listen, I love shooting portraits with a wide open, shallow depth of field, just like the next person does, but the reality is that great portraits don't necessarily have to be shot wide open. Now, I did a couple of videos about this. I have one that's on my channel, one that's on Adorama TV. Um, talking about the differences between shooting wide open versus stopping down. But listen, there are gonna be some times where you want to actually have like some of the background in focus because it's going to contribute to the story. Uh, you don't always want to shoot your stuff wide open. And I know that, you know, you, you spend a lot of money buying an F1.4 lens and so you just feel like by nature, gotta shoot wide open because that's what the lens is made for. But the reality is that the lenses are actually sharper around two stops or so from being wide open. And so that's something that you wanna keep in mind whenever you're shooting portraits. Don't feel like, you know, just because everybody is shooting their stuff wide open that you have to do that. The reality is that it's very easy to stand apart from the competition, from your peers, from the people in your local market if you shoot differently. And what's the easiest way that you can shoot differently? Don't shoot stuff wide open all the time, right? Just shoot it, stop down, even just the tiniest bit. Start thinking a little bit more about your locations, your backgrounds, where it is that you plan on shooting and try to incorporate those things into your portraits. And trust me when I tell you, that one tip alone is going to make you a much better portrait photographer. Let's talk about the third lie that a lot of portrait photography newbies believe, and that is that models should know how to pose themselves. Um, I can't count the number of times that I've talked to photographers who uh, maybe I'm looking at their portfolio and trying to help them with uh, getting better images, and then they tell me, oh, you know, I work with this model, and they didn't really know what they were doing, and that's why I didn't get good shots. Here's the thing, right? As a portrait photographer, everything that you capture within your image is up to you, right? It's on you. It is your responsibility to make sure that whatever's in the frame, it's there because you want it to be there, right? That includes the, the, the person you're photographing, their pose, their expression. If they aren't giving you what you want out of that image, then you need to get it out of them. You have to tell them, listen, I would like for you to maybe pose in this type of way or 
uh, to give this type of expression or give this type of emotion, you have to tell them that or else if they don't give it to you, then it's on you, right? It's not on them. It's not their fault that they don't look great within the photo. It is we bear some of that responsibility as a good portrait photographer. So it's probably one of the biggest um, it's up there, right? This is a top five list that we're coming up with here. And it's one of the big ones that I think is really holding a lot of people back. So listen, if you want to get better portraits of people, be responsible for posing, for expressions, for everything that you find within the frame, and you're going to get better shots. All right, so let's get into the next uh, lie that a lot of portrait photography newbies believe. And that is that you have to have great equipment, great gear to take great photos. Uh, that's probably one of the biggest lies that I think I've heard from many newbie photographers. And as a matter of fact, my like YouTube career started based on a friend who was a portrait photography newbie at the time who uh, thought that he had to get better equipment in order to take better photos. And so the reality is that you can take great photos no matter what you have. I mean, we've seen people take amazing portraits using an iPhone or an Android phone. Um, you know, so you don't necessarily have to have great equipment to take a great photo. Now, with that being said, what you do need is to make sure that you have the fundamentals down pat, right? Making sure that you understand lighting, that you know where to put your subjects uh, you know, in a, a certain environment to be able to get the best light, uh, to be able to get the best poses, the best expressions. These are the things that really, really make a difference. Not so much that you photograph them using some really fancy expensive lens. So keep that in mind for your next shoot. It's a huge lie. Don't fall for it. You don't need to have great gear to take great portraits. All right, let's talk about the uh, fifth lie that a lot of portrait photography newbies believe, and that is that it's really easy to take great portraits of beautiful people. Can't tell you the number of times that I've uploaded an image to social media and um, have had comments of people saying, oh, you know, if you couldn't take a good picture of that person, you should just sell your camera. It's almost like, like the camera just takes the pictures on its own. And the reality is that I've seen plenty of great pictures of everyday looking people, right? It's, it has nothing to do with how the person looks, but how that person is represented within the image. So how they're lit, how they're posing, the location that you choose to photograph them in, all of those things are super important. You could take a really gorgeous person, the most beautiful person you can think of in your mind and put them in bad lighting in a bad situation and you're going to take really crappy portraits. And that's on you. Again, we kind of talked about that in the prior tips. So you want to make sure that it doesn't matter who you're photographing, whether it's a beautiful person, regular person, that you want to make them look their absolute best. And this idea of it being so much easier if you have this like gorgeous person that the picture automatically is going to be great and you get no, no credit, no points, that's all a bunch of garbage. So that's my fifth tip. And I actually have a bonus tip. So I'm actually here at Create Coffee Studio in Orlando Florida with my boy, my boy Q. And so, uh, so we're kind of talking about this idea of like lies that portrait photography newbies believe. Yeah. And I know you shoot portraits, you do landscapes, you're like a man of many talents. So um, what is a, a, a thing that you seem to hear that's like very prevalent within like the newbie circle of portrait photography? Um, you know what one thing I really hate is a lot of people think that nudity mm -hmm. means better and sexual pictures. You yeah, know? man. You know, it's like you don't have to take a nude picture of somebody to be more sexual or a sexy image. They don't have, they can still have their clothes on and st you can still achieve that look. Right, right. No, I totally agree with you. I can tell you, if you go into uh, some of the like photography groups and stuff, um, or right. even go into like local photography clubs and you see a lot of these people starting out, you know, they're taking pictures of like, like we were talking about this off camera, but yeah. like, you know, somebody nude on train tracks, you know, Dude, like, like <laughs> bent over and it's like, oh my God, she took her clothes off for this. And it's just like, doesn't look appealing. It's not no, sexy. It's no, nasty, it's like, you know? and again, it almost kind of um, rolls into what I was saying for my fifth thing, which is that, you know, just because somebody's beautiful doesn't mean that you can't take a bad photo of them, you know, yeah. like it's, it's entirely possible. And this is one of those things where there's a lot of newbies that believe like, oh, we're going to take a great picture. Just take off all your clothes and I'm going to have you stand in this forest. And it's like nothing else is happening. 
You know, they could have, they could be gorgeous, most beautiful body you've ever seen in your life, and it could still be a bad photo. It's absolutely all, crazy. It happens all the time. Yep. All the time. So I would love to know, these are, you know, five plus one bonus tip here. I would love to know from you guys out there watching, what is a lie that you hear in portrait photography that you hear all the time in those like newbie circles? Leave them in the comment section below. Drop them. Drop them down. <laughs> drop it like it's hot. And uh, yeah, while you're there, make sure you subscribe to the channel because I got videos coming out all the time. Make sure that you check out uh, Create Coffee Studio, Around Q, yes, sir. Sony Images, Sony Portraits. What the heck else are you into? Um, that's it. That's it. I just named them all. <laughs> so make sure you, I'll put them all in the description of the video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll check you out next time.